Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor. And it's another video about the 500 book challenge today. The challenge where I'm going to be reading 500 books before I buy any new ones. And I'm actually doing okay on the challenge. I'm not nearly as far along as some others. But I am at 32 because I read this book a couple days ago. Now, some of you might scoff at me for including Frog and Toad together as a book, but you know what? It, look, there are words in here. Um, it's, this is a book. It's just, you know, very small. But I feel comfortable counting it because I'm also going to be counting these other gigantic momentum-killing mammoths that are on the horizon. And... You might wonder, well, if you're trying to get through this challenge, why would you bother to read gigantic books? Why would you even consider it? That's a fair question. And I think the reason is, is because I'm going to be doing this for so long anyway. I mean, this is going to take forever. I mean, especially now. But it's going to be taking forever anyway. And if this were a 100 book challenge, I would just read you know, small books. I would, I would read, you know, smaller books if it were just 100 books and it was just going to be taking me a little over a year or something to do it. Yeah, then I would just feel comfortable reading books on the smaller side just to get through the challenge. But this is a 500 book challenge and it's going to take a long, long time anyway. And I really want to read all of these books and I don't really feel like I want to wait necessarily six or seven years, however long this thing takes, you know, before I read them. So I'm just going to go ahead and plan tentatively on reading these at some point during the challenge, because I do want to get to all of these books. I do really want to read all of these. Now, the funny part is that a couple of these are rereads. And so you might say, well, geez, you've, you've read these books already. Why on earth would you spend time rereading a gigantic book that you've already read. And that's because I do want to read these books at least one more time before I croak, and who knows when that's going to be. It could happen any time. And both of these books are works in translation, and I have not read these particular translations, like this one for Les Mis. This is the Penguin edition. I did not read this edition originally when I read Les Mis a few years ago for the first time. This one is translated by, who does this translation? It's supposed to be really good, by uh, Robert Toombs. Robert Toombs does this one. And this book is really, really large. It's well over a thousand pages, I think. Yeah, it's well over a thousand pages. And was it 1,200 pages or something? Yeah, yeah, this, thir yeah. Well, it's big, it's big. It's, it's a big book, it's, Wonderful. It's a wonderful big book, but it's huge. And so it is a reread, although I didn't read this translation before. So, you know, that's a good enough reason. But it's enormous, and that's going to take a pretty good investment of time for someone like me who doesn't read real quick. And, you know, I, I know that. Because, you know, I've recently been reading Wolf Hall, which is only 600 pages, and that thing's been taking me like three weeks because of how limited, the limited amount of reading time that I've had. So imagine how long a book like this is going to take. This is a book I've read before, The, County, the Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas. But this translation is the translation by Robin Buss. Robin Buss did this translation, and I have not read this one. So... I'm going to be reading this. That's going to be fun. It's, it's gigantic. So yeah, two books, no problem. No problems at all. You know, I'm not worried, not worried at all. Speaking of penguins, I do also think I'm going to be reading this. This is The Mysteries of Paris by Eugene Sue, who I was supposed to, I was supposed to read this last year and, and didn't get to it because you know, that's why this thing is a little bit big. But it was also very influential. This influenced Les Mis. Uh, this 
very popular book, kind of a penny dreadful type of story from what I hear. And it is over 1300 pages long in this translation. But, you know, I don't want to die without reading this. So I probably will read this at some point in the next few years. And I can guarantee you, I will still be on the challenge when I read it. Now, here's a book I've intended to read for a long, long time. And that is uh, Sir Thomas Mallory's Les Mortes d'Arthur. I don't know how to pronounce that. I, I've pronounced this before and I pronounced it wrong. You can, you can all correct me once again, but yeah, Mallory. His, his King Arthur story, you know, with Merlin and all that. And I've intended on reading this. This used to be on my shelf, now it's someplace else. But it's still a book I want to read and it's over 900 pages long. And oh, look, there's the, it's Monday. It's Monday, so the garbage truck is here at Stately Vaughn Manor to pick up our stately garbage. Don't worry, I don't think they'll find any of the bodies. You, you push them down really good in the dumpster, so. So yeah, this one, I need to read this. And there are a couple other giant books. There's, uh, there's Taiko by Fiji Yushikawa or excuse me, Aiji Yoshikawa, I think. Like I said, I can't pronounce anything, but Taiko, I've read Musashi, which was by the same author, which was fantastic. So I really want to read this. Again, 900, 900 pages long, almost 800 and yeah, no, 900 pages. So it's big. It's a great big book. Really want to read it. It's not as big as this next one though. <laughs> this is The Tale of Genji, The Tale of Genji. This is by Murasaki Shikibu. This one is real big. And it's supposed to be kind of challenging uh, from what I hear. How big are you? It's got lots of stuff on in the back, of course. Got some, like charts and maps and all kinds of stuff. But oh, look, the text runs out at 1,120 pages. So it's huge. I'm going to read it because I feel like I, you know, I want to read it at some point. Might as well read it for the challenge. Why not? Now, there are also some anthologies that are going to be taking some time. I've got an anthology that I've been intending on reading the last two Halloweens in a row and haven't done it, and that's, of course, The Dark Descent, a famous anthology by David G. Hartwell. This anthology is very long and full of fantastic horror fiction. One of the most important horror anthologies of all time, so you think I would have read it sometime in the last couple of years, but no, I didn't because I was reading other things. But I, I still fully intend on reading this, so we'll see if I get to it this Halloween or not. Probably not, but because I've got something else I think that's kind of lined up around that time, but we'll see. The Dark Descent, I've got to read it. Because I also want to read its sequel, also edited by David G. Hartwell, The Foundations of Fear. This is kind of like, yeah, it's pretty much a sequel to that one, only it's not as big. This one is only 660 pages. So not as big as the other book. Not, not a mammoth like the other one is. But these next couple books, first of all, this book is one of the big books. And I'm going to be reading all the big books at some point during the challenge, which is ridiculous. These are Otto Penzler's big books. This is just one by way of example. Although I do have a video about Otto Penzler's big books that I'll link down below. A great series of books. This is an example of one of Otto Penzler's anthologies, the big book of ghost stories. So these books are gigantic double columned, so they're extra huge, um, but they're just so cool, uh, these books. Um, a lot of them have really cool illustrations on the titles of the stories, not all of them, but not all the stories have illustrations, but they're really cool. And this one is, what, 830 pages of double columned stories about ghosts? I mean, who wouldn't want to read that? I know, I know, even Roger wants to read this. So yeah, the big book of ghost stories, along with, you know, all of his other big books. So 
imagine how much time that'll take. Imagine how much time this will take. This is the big book of science fiction. This one, though, is edited by Anne and Jeff Vandermeer. So it's another big book. Same format. Even bigger than that one is, though. This one is... Oh, my goodness. How long is this? It's 1,160 pages of double-columned stories. Full, packed full of great old science fiction and some newer stuff, probably. But... It's huge. This book is huge. This book is... This is a complete momentum-killing mammoth that'll stop me dead in my tracks for what? How long do you think it will take me to read this, honestly? Two months, maybe? If we're being honest about, you know, how fast I really read things, this thing, I don't even want to think about it, but it's going to be a lot. So yeah, they... What? Rogers reminded me of something. You're right, Roger. We can't forget Varney. Varney. I read half of Varney. Well, almost half. The second part is actually bigger than the first part. But, yeah. And this one starts where the other one left off. Um, so last year I read 641 pages of Varney, and this picks up from there. The famous Penny Dreadful, Varney the Vampire, uh, it's magnificent. Look at those cool illustrations. Uh, it's it's full of it's full of goodness, and I can't wait to get back to Varney because I did really enjoy the first part of Varney. But yeah, it took a while to read, and this one is going to take a long time to read. So yeah, so yeah, there you go. See now you understand why I was so happy to count Frog and Toad. Uh, if I had more books of that length, I'd probably read them too. But, you know, I don't have many books that small. Most of my books are regular book-sized. Or gigantic. Or gigantic. Okay, guys, that's all I have to say today. I will catch you next time.